Hi, welcome to Business Automated. Today I will show you how to create a custom translation application inside of Airtable using our code. Let's get to it. So Airtable inside of Airtable Apps Marketplace already has an application that does translation using Google Translate. The drawback of this application is that it translates one language at a time and also you need to upgrade to a pro plan to be able to use it. With our custom script you can actually use still until March 2021st you can still use for free the custom script and you can also translate multiple languages with a single press of a button. One additional element is that this application only translates the things that are missing inside of our translation. So for example if we adjust a translation here then and if we do any corrections when we want to correct whatever Google Translate automatically translated and we press run the script it will not override the old changes it will only add the missing translation so if we add any new text the new Google translation will be only added to the missing missing entries without affecting anything that we have translated before or maybe we have already corrected and uh, we don't want to change. So that's the major difference between uh, our application and uh, the standard Google Translate application. All right, so to be able to use that code, the first thing that you need to do is to go to the link in the description of the video and copy the code from the article over there and after that we basically go to install an app and you're going to select scripting install the scripting app you can start from scratch without any examples and now remove any sample code that might be placed here and copy paste our code you can see you don't need to go into the details of everything but what is interesting for for you to know is that the first row here is um, the language that we are going to be using as the source translation so you can see I've been using English here as the base language to translate English to all the other languages you could change this base languages language to anything else and it would still uh, still work so you could change it to German Spanish or whatever other language and then this text column would have to be in that given given language next element you need to get your own google translate api code that you have to place here this code is going to look something like like that uh, in the description of this video you also have a link to the instruction how to get this from your uh, from google translate and there is a fairly generous free limit for translation so uh, that won't cost you anything the next element is the names of the columns. So you can see that in our case, every column contains a name of a language that we will be using. In this case, we are using a locale code, but it would work exactly fine if you would just shorten this only to ISO name of the language. So that's how the script knows that there will be multiple languages to translate. So any column that you have with a language name it will be translated with exception of the columns that are included here so you can see that in this part these are the names of the columns that are not being considered as language so for example the plugin name which is a technical column that i was using for something and also the field name text name which is a hidden field which we are also not using and the text code it's also not considered as a language because this is where our source text is included so if you would like to if you would like to change the name of your source column then you need to change those languages those names here text code you would also need to change the text code description if you're not going to be using text code as your source if you're going to change for example to source you will have to change it here text code text code everywhere where the text code is is mentioned in all the variables so i suggest it will be just easier to keep basically the same generic name and that's pretty much it once you once you add your api code here once you exclude any additional columns that you would, might want to use here so for example let's add let's say last modified so in this case we would also exclude the last modified column column here
This way the script will not attempt to use the last modified as the name of the, of the language. All right, so that's, that's everything. You can find more about workings of this script inside of the uh, article, uh, inside of the description of this video. And if you have uh, any question, then let us know and uh, ask us in the comments. I hope this was useful for you and please subscribe. Thank you.